Hello and welcome uh, to another Inkscape developer update video. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer. Um, I develop uh, features and bug fi fixes for users. And um, this week, I want to start off by giving a big shout out to my patron supporters. Uh, thank you all very much for your continued support. Um, we have a long road to go to, to make this sustainable, but uh, we're going to keep plugging away at it. Uh, so we're, I'm very excited because um, one week's time, we're going to have the release can candidate for Inkscape 1.1 released. Uh, that means that the development team considers it to be finished, effectively finished. There might be some tweaks, translations, and other things that go in, but developers should basically consider things to be fixed, as fixed as they're going to be. And then there'll be three weeks that the Vectors team, the, the outreach team, have asked for to uh, prepare all of the mar mar marketing news releases and all the various things, videos and things, that they need to be able to make the 1.1 release uh, full, fully fun functional. And that, that time will also be used to make sure that uh, translations are up to date and, and uh, there's no other major issues that crop up uh, after the release can candidate is finished. Um, this is because we have fixed all of our blocking bugs and we have uh, we're in really good shape it looks like we've got uh, a lot of fixes already for things that people complained about in 1.0 1, 1 which is great it looks like inkscape 1.1 will be uh, not not just functionally better but uh, more more stable um it looks like which is great uh, we've had a, a lot fewer uh, complaints or, or pro problems crop, crop up and when people have reported issues with 1.0 a lot of the time we just recommend them install the beta and their problems seem to go away um, which is a good sign that we're, we're on the right track so uh what do these fixes look, look like so the first thing is i worked quite hard this week on the extensions manager fallback um, this is for win windows so that windows users can use the extensions manager uh, previously we were trying to use a technology called python virtual env but uh, to create virtual environments on uh, Windows for Python is complicated. So instead, what I've done is I've coded a fallback, which what it does is it, it downloads a zip file containing the extensions manager instead. And instead of running an installer, it just puts the files in the extensions direct directory like you might expect it to. Uh, we already know that the Windows version of Inkscape ships with all of the dependencies required, you know, the requirements to run the extensions manager. So that should be okay. And uh, previous weeks, I already had coded a fallback mechanism for not having virtual env inside the extensions manager itself. So with all that said, this means that it should be ready for the release, hopefully. Uh, this week, I'm actually going to be doing some more testing on that. I have installed a Windows machine here on an, an old machine. Uh, it's the first time I've actually installed Windows in a very long time, um, 20 years. And it's it was frightening, honestly. But uh, it's important to test that uh, this thing works. Um, so bug fixes this week. So, so there's so many bug fi fixes. Um, I fixed a guide selection pro problem where we were basically letting, letting the guides override drawing tools so that you couldn't actually place things next to guides. You couldn't draw things next to guides anymore because the guide would move. Um, thank you to everybody on Twitter and in, in the UX team that reviewed this pro pro problem to make sure that the fix was appropriate. We've limited it so that only the select and node tools will move the guides again, which is correct, which is the same as it was in 1.0. 1, 1 uh, there's a, t a technical bug that happened when you were saving SVG files where it would strip away all comments and other things that are inside the SVG. Some of our more technical users use uh, PI nodes and all the various XML things in their technical implementations. And if Inkscape strips those away, then technically it's it's losing data. So I fixed that pro problem. It should be maintaining more of the nodes. Even if Inkscape's not using them, the data should be maintained now. Uh, UI glitch, the modifiers on the toolbar weren't correct for the uh, for, for, for the resize hand, hand, hand handles. If you modified the modifiers, modify the modifiers. If you change the modifiers so that they were a different key from Control and Alt and Shift, etc., et et the the tooltip would still say the original key. Uh, this has been fixed. It was basically hard code coded, and it needed a system for uh, putting the right keys in. Um, there was a 
critical bug with redoing circle circle creation. So if you created a circle and then un press the undo and then press redo, the object that would be created would be not a circle and it would be actually be corrupted. Like Inkscape would pretend it had recreated your circle, but mm -mm, it was just wrong. Uh, I actually posted to Twitter about that because it was the fix was so simple, but it created quite a nasty problem. Uh, small fix for the uh, guide colors for reverting on load. So basically you would set the guide color to green or red or something else to indicate what type of guide it was. And then you would reopen your file in Inkscape and it would be back to blue. Um, that's been fixed. Uh, there was a crash, which was a blocker for opening files with large filter re regions. S certain kinds of files with certain kind of masking options would basically just cause Inkscape to crash. That's been fixed. Um, there's an auto palettes fix, which is basically on the on the on the bottom of Inkscape. There's a bunch of colors. One of those select one of those palettes is called auto, and what that does is it, it adds all of the swatches and colors that you're using in the document into that palette so it automatically grows with your document. Uh, a lot of users don't know about that fe feature um, but I managed to fix it so that it's uh, it continues to work when you're opening up new documents. It had some subtle pro problems between the dialog, sw the swatches dialog and, the, and this widget. Um, I did a, uh, a fix and I actually sh did an entire 30 minute video with subtitles um, sh showing how to fix a bug in Inkscape. Um, this bug was the uh, showing dialogues w when you had hidden them. So you can press F12 to hide all that dialogues. And this allowed you to show, um, sh you know, when you ask for the film stroke again, it, it, now it will show them again. So that you, you're not just left there trying to show uh, a dialogue you want to see, but it won't, it won't show it to, to you because this, it thinks that you want it to hide them all. Um, it was a good video. It was very well received. Um, I made it as a video because it was actually a live stream. I was doing it to 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 our outreach students. These are uh, potential interns that Inkscape will hire in collaboration with the with the outreach project, who will uh, work on Inkscape during the summertime. Uh, well, in, in the next few weeks, I think. Um, they have pro projects that they need to do, but they need to prove that they're like capable of working on code and things, and so getting them able to work on Inkscape and figure out like how to deal with such a very large code base, which mo most university students uh, and, and other programmers are not used to such a, a large pro project, getting them introduced and, and, and uh, you know, af what do you do after you've got an Inkscape to compile? How do you <clears throat> pick a bug and uh, pick your way through the code to figure out how to fix it? Um, I, I could do more educational videos along those lines. Um, big thank to big thanks to Chris Rod Rogers once again. He stepped in to do do me some graphics with the with the uh, the bunny ear headphones. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. Uh, look, it looks great and, and, and very cool. Ho hopefully, I'll be able to use it more more, more often. Um, and that's about it. There's lots of merge requests and other reviews and some administration work for the, the 1.0 release for the 1.1 release, I should say. Um, but thank you very much for watching. And if you have any comments um, and suggestions in the next few weeks, I'm going to be asking all of my Patreons for their ideas about what I should be working on for the next sites and cycle. So I'll probably be putting together some polls. Um, so please do tune in for that. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. Thank you all. And I'll see you next week.